Hi, how you doing? Welcome back to Smoking Cheltenham. It's been a little while, hasn't it? Nice to see you again. Hope you're good. Um, yeah, we've got a fair bit to catch up on, I guess, so you might need a flask today. Um, a little bit pushed for time. I've kind of had to rush through my notes a little bit, so bear with me. Um, what we'll do today, we've got like a 14 to 1 selection for Dublin and we'll just look back on what we've missed. So we'll start with a bit of news. Halkett de Tabert is out of Cheltenham. So yeah, it's uh, this ride, it's all ups and downs in it. And I don't know, I think she was probably a high point and now she becomes a low point really we had a proper lash at her at 25s this should have been by far our biggest uh, drag there but she's out that's a shame so we'll have a moment silence for Halka to tap her okay right help me move on it's part of the game isn't it it's just one of those things um talking of learning i guess one thing i've learned this year like i said i was kind of learning about the multis a bit myself i've learned to have less <laughs> yeah i think 20 percent were way too much so we'll uh, dramatically cut back on them next season i'd, I'd suggest we'll keep it to more 10%, 5% even, I think, early on. Certainly no more than 10%. Um, that were kind of the final nail in a lot of my multis. Some nice bets we allow at 25s. Um, I think pretty much all I've got left personally, I've got a, a nice double real Fabiolo in Constitutional. That would pay for most of it, to be fair. And um, a Trixie and Treble with Lozzy Mouth, El Fabiola and Brighter Days Ed, and the rest of it's all kind of damaged somewhat now. So, yeah, that's the lesson I've learnt for next season anyway. It's been a little bit brutal this season. I, you know, some seasons you get worse luck than others, don't you, with the anti post, and this is shaping up into one of them. Not so good years, but we'll see. Right, anyway, uh, oh yeah, other news just off the top of my head there. Constitutional, he's going straight to the champion hurdle now, isn't he? Um, he's got a bit of a cold or something, so... Yeah, I think Nicky would kind of have to, a reason not to run him there. Maybe, and he's got one there, hasn't he? Which I think, to be fair, thinking about it, that would, I mean, we mentioned, didn't we, in Parapass, the talk about stairs hurdle, he said, couldn't really see that myself, but you'd have thought that would present a great opportunity for in Parapass there, that, that race at Cheltenham. Um, could, could well come across for that, we'll see. And yeah, so we'll start looking back at the race and then we're going all the way back to Sunday 7th of January at Nace. Two and a half mile mares beginners, night and day took this. She beat Brandy Love by 10 lengths. We didn't get to see much of this race, did we? She was settled last of four, four or five lengths off the leader. We briefly saw them. We are about half a mile to run where Brandy Love was in the lead, and Night and Day were third at that point, three or four lengths behind. Then when, they, when we next saw her, she powered up the run in to win by 10 lengths or so. She had a tongue time for the first time. I've always kind of had half an eye on this horse for a mare's chase. She's shaped not without promise behind Hulk her first time up. She's quite a big mare she probably needed that a lot of willies were needing the runs then but she will need to build on this you'd like to see her do it again um, 
she did win well last season and then the wheels sort of fell off although she didn't run too bad to be fair the run after anyway, over two mile softer heavy ground could be quite important so I'm not sure but she looks the part and yeah we'll see if she can build on this if she can build on this she'd be a, a contender there in that Merce chase right then and then we're all the way up to Friday the 12th we'll go to Huntington two mile novice hurdle we g we'll give this horse a mention tell her the name because we've uh, kind of followed him all the way through haven't we he beat Dartmoor Pirate here by 14 lengths onto 1 to 4 just led all the way jumped really well in the main poured it on from three out a bit untidy two out i don't think this is a cheltenham horse but we do really like this horse i thought he might be one for aintree earlier in the season but he did blow out there last time he should have finished somewhere near the winner there Django bay but he ran no race at all um if you look at his form now, he's had two wins at Huntington this year and that big run at Ascot where he just, just got chinned by Django Bay. All right-handed and he did seem to jump to the right at Aintree. Now that run, you could put that down to anything. It could have been anything, but for me, I'd just have to see him do it left-handed again before getting involved going that way round. But he's an eye sauce, we like him. Then one to Nace, a two mile novice chase. Quilixios beats Safara, just over two lengths here. But Mr. Policeman, a further six and a half lengths back in third. Quilixios was always prominent and he jumped well. He's improved in that department. He didn't stay three mile the time before, looked much happier at this trip. He has got winning festival form. Yeah, um, I'd imagine he's Arkle bound now. Um, the horse he beat here, Safra, he was getting well beat by Hunter Jean when that horse fell at the last. So, on balance, I'd say he's kind of like a place contender for the Arkle. But um, it's hard to imagine him getting anywhere near like a Marine National, I guess. Mr. Policeman, he were disappointing, weren't he? He were. Um, I do think he's worth a try over further sort of thought all along is after two and a half mile this horse but even so this were poor and you'd have to have some reservations he doesn't really look like a turner's winner in waiting does he so i guess that point on him's going in the bin for now i don't think that point's coming back out <laughs> i think that's in the bin bin right Yeah, probably. Right then, eventually we got to see the two and a half mile grade one Lawler's an ace. Reading Tommy wrong, he beat Il Atlantic here and neck with Lecky Watson a further seven, seven and a half lengths back in third. We've got quite a lot to unpack from this race, I'd say. So they kind of set off in a bit of a bunch. Il Atlantic, he put in a quick leap at the first. On the approach to the second, Chapeau de Soleil led narrowly from Il Atlantic. However, Il Atlantic was again fast, whereas Chapeau de Soleil made a mistake and lost a few places, leaving Il Atlantic in the lead. At the third, 
Chapeau de Soleil made a really bad mistake and dropped back to near last. Il Atlantique continued in the lead. The pace were steady for most of the race. Not bad, quite even, sort of decent pace without going too quick. Um, at this time, we had Il Atlantic in the lead, Croke Park was sat second and Firefox in third. Reading Tommy wrong, he was next to last. Right, on the approach to four out, they started to quicken and Il Atlantic made a mistake there. It was good three out. Croke Park came under pressure there and Firefox was moving well in third. Reading Tommy Wrong was closing up at this point on the inside. Turning for home with two to jump, Il Atlantique had a length or so over a line of four. From inside out, they were reading Tommy Wrong, Firefox, Croke Park and Lecky Watson. Jumping two out, they dropped Croke Park. Il Atlantique was travelling best, two lengths or so clear, a reading Tommy Wrong. Firefox and Lecky Watson, who all came under pressure. At the last, reading Tommy Wrong came to challenge Il Atlantic, but he flattened that flight. Firefox and Lecky Watson had been burnt off on the approach to this flight, and the front two were clear from here. Reading Tommy Wrong, he kept at it and kept at it, and eventually he got on top in the last 30 yards or so. Yeah, cracking race, it were. Right. This look, the deepest novice hurdle of the season so far beforehand. The form looks very strong and it should work out well. Um, just to show you this, Croke Park, he will beat 23 lengths. He's just after winning the Grade 3 Monksfield. Chapeau de Soleil will beat 17 lengths. He came 10th in the bumper beating around 14 lengths. Funny enough, he finished about eight lengths behind Lecky Watson there. A couple more behind him here, but the jumping didn't help him on that score. He did look much improved in his maiden last time. And Tubber, he would beat 15 lengths. He's just after coming third in the Grade 1 Royal Bond, beaten three lengths. Firefox, he will beat nine lengths here. He's just after beating Ballyburn two and a half lengths, who's then gone on and been impressive in a maiden. Lecky Watson, he will beat eight lengths here. He's just after being beat half a length by Slade Steel in the grade two Navan Novice. Now, maybe some of these didn't run up to their best, but I'd say it's probably a stretch to say they all underperformed here. I'd feel fairly happy to sort of rate the race through the third Lecky Watson. I think he gave his running. I'd have, yeah, I'd have said. So we'll take them individually. Croke Park, he would bang their three out, but he just couldn't go with them when the pace lifted. He's going to be, as we said, like next year's horse, he's going to be a cracking three mile chaser next year. Chapeau de Soleil, yeah, he ruined his chance early with some really bad jumping. At the second and third in particular. He wasn't really great for the rest of the race either, but he did stick at it well in the straight. He should appreciate a step up to three mile. Kind of thought he looked to stay there last time. But he will have to improve his jumping, won't he, to make an impact at the top level. Horses can, though. They can. And Tubber, he started to be niggled on the approach to four out and he wasn't great there. 
they were kind of beat from that point really weren't really in love with his finishing effort last time and I wouldn't really be in a rush to back him any time soon Firefox he arrived with every chance and didn't look to have any obvious excuses and maybe it looked like he didn't quite get home but I find that hard to believe judged on his previous efforts Yeah, he did beat El Atlantic the second year by three quarters of a length last year. Horses, they do improve at different rates, these novices. But he kind of looked, improved himself last time. And as much as I think El Atlantic's improved a lot, I'm not sure if he has improved ten length more. I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, on balance... I think he was probably a shade below his best here. I mean, this run puts him about a length and a half behind Slade Steel. Slade Steel's a good horse. Maybe that's as good as he is. But my gut feeling is he ran just a little bit below. Lecky Watson, he travelled well, touch keen. He looks like thought all season really three mile decent ground but he does travel well though um, I, he just looks kind of like a great play spot horse to me um, I'd say wherever he turns up at Cheltenham chuck him in play spot yeah Il Atlantic yeah it looked very much like the plan was to get a lead off Chapeau de Soleil here but he found himself in front because that horse couldn't jump. He travelled and jumped really well in the main and to be fair, he did stay on well after the last. Um, I'd say, you know, last year, he used, a couple of times he came there travelling well, didn't really find much. I think he found plenty enough this time. He'd maybe just be a shade disappointed he didn't get it done. But I wouldn't underestimate the winner here. I suspect he may be dropped in trip to the Supreme. And I can see him running a big race there without winning. I think wherever he goes at Charlton, I can see him in the frame without winning. He looks like he's going to make a cracking chaser to me, and maybe it's the Arkle next year. Um, and a Gamine 2.0. I don't know. It's not just a lazy comparison. I know it's the same colours and everything, but it does look like he's going to make a cracking chaser to me. We'll see. We'll see. The winner then, reading Tommy wrong, he improved massively for the step up in trip and the left handed galloping track. He did jump out to his left last time on quite a tight a track. His jumping wasn't great here. You'd have to respect him in a Ballymore, given his unbeaten record and the strength of this form. However, I'm not sure the tight, twisty track would suit. And also, Ballymore winners, they tend to have that speed for two mile. At this level, I think he'd struggle with that. you got to love the way he stayed at it to nail the second. But it wasn't like a burst of speed. It was more just like a sustained finishing effort, which is often the sign of a high-class horse. It might seem a little strange, given the strength of this form, but for me, if there's a Cheltenham winner here, it's this fella for the Albert Bartlett. Yeah. I think that track would suit him much better. And I don't think the three mile would be a bother to him. In fact, he looks to me like he'd improve for it. I'd strongly fancy him for that, I would. He looks to me 
a little like a couple of previous winners like Bobsworth looks quite reminiscent of Bobsworth to me you can maybe throw the nice guy in there as well in that they've they'd have the class to be competitive in a Ballymore but they would stay the three mile well and that class would kind of set them apart for me in an Albert Bartlett so despite a short list as long as your arm for the Albert Bartlett he'd be a strong fancy for me there I think if he ran in that but but Connections were more pointing towards a Ballymore post race, so you couldn't really be backing him at anti post at the moment, despite being eight to one favourite. He's the same price for the Ballymore, and his second favourite there behind Ballyburn. So, yeah, in, in summary, I like him for the Albert Bartlett if that's where they decide to go. really an anti-post bet at the moment with the doubts like most of Willie's in you know right two mile maiden hurdle with Gitully a quick mention here he beat light keeper by seven lengths he jumped off in front and apart from stretching for the second I thought his jumping was okay here certainly a lot better than last time if a little bit slow and careful he was impressive here, the form's probably not worth all that much, but he were impressive and he looks to have he looks to have an engine on him. I've got a feeling this fella's gonna be a much better chaser. Um probably not Cheltenham this year. He wouldn't have the jumping for a Supreme. He could possibly take his chance in a Ballymore. Yeah. But yeah, I think he could be a cracking chaser next year, this fella. Right then, Saturday, Fairy House. Two mile, one and a half beginners, Hunter Jean beat Path to Rue 10 lengths. Yeah, he sat Andy, jumped well, bar a bad mistake, two out, where he got, he were a bad mistake, he just sort of ran through the fence. And he won well. He made a similar mistake the time before. And he paid the price that time. He looks nice. But I don't, for me, he's not like Arkle class. Um, he won't want to be making any mistakes like that at Cheltenham. He was one four two over hurdles. He looks a better chaser, mainly. But yeah, I think he's be a little bit short for me, a grade one. We'll see. Two bar bumper, the much vaunted Romeo Coolio beat Sporting Glory a length and a quarter here. Very highly regarded, this fella. I think Gordon thinks a lot of him and he did this well enough he did it snug we are setting the world on fire he had had a minor setback I think he'd missed some work and he's expected to come on plenty from this I wouldn't judge him too harshly on this Jalon Duderiz when he won Gordon said Jack would ride him they say these things don't they it'll be interesting to see if that's going to be the case still um, yeah we'll be interested to see who Jack does ride I think he's is he around 8 to 1 now or something for the bump. some of these anti-post prices are, are terrible they really are yeah, we'll get to a few more yet. But. All right, Kenton, grade two, two and a half miles, Silviano Conti chase. Bambridge beat Pictori nearly two length. Pictori led 
Bambridge by a length or two for most of the race here. So I haven't gone into quite as much detail on some of these races, just to try and get through it a bit today. And for most of the race, Pick Dory travelled easy and jumped well, whereas Bambridge looked kind of a bit ring rusty and his jumping were a little bit scruffy. He's normally an excellent jumper. However, he kept at it to his credit, Bambridge. He served it up to his rival from two out and he got on top after the last. It's where good effort from Bambridge, giving race fitness away at this stage of the season. He's two from two at Cheltenham. He's won a Martin Pipe at the festival and a grade two novice chase. He's five to one for the Ryanair now. I'm all over this fella last year for the turn as I were I really strongly fancied him and he boast. But he was took out on the day because of the soft ground. And I'm not falling for that again with him. Um, I do like him. And if he gets his ground, he'd be the one for me. He would. I do like him. I think he's like a better horse at Cheltenham. Like, you know, his two runs at Cheltenham have been class. But he doesn't need his ground, so he's not... You couldn't back this fall anti post, I don't think. Um, Warwick, three mile grade two, Hampton Novich Chase, Grey Dawning, be Apple Away 14 lengths here. Broadway Boy and Apple Away, the shared lead for a circuit or so before Apple Away moved on. Grey Dawning sat third or fourth for much of the race, a few lengths off the leaders. He jumped right into it at the fifth, moved on to the quarters of Apple Away, turning for home, and he was just lobbing along there. He took it up, jumping the second last, where he went left. He cleared away, went very left at the last. I just thought for a moment, is he going to jump into the wing gear um, and yeah he won impressive he were I think he relished a step up to three mile here I think he's got a massive engine this fella he's generally a good jumper but he, <laughs> he does have these moments don't he he can throw in a howler it cost him the race last time at Cheltenham he's a contender for sure, for the Browns and the four miler, but that tendency to throw in a bad jump would worry me there. He still looks a little immature to me. Like I say, I think he's got a massive engine, but is he professional enough this year for Cheltenham? I would have my doubts. I'd be all over him if he skips Cheltenham and goes to Aintree for that three mile grade one novice chase there yeah um, we'll see I mean they're entitled to take the chance at Cheltenham I just have that concern with his jumping there I think he's he looks looks a great horse though he's a good prospect right then on to Sunday two mile three and a half fell on grade three novice chase Spillane's Tower beat Blood Destiny here Two lengths, I think it were. I didn't write the distance down. Blood Destiny jumped and travelled well in the lead, but finished a little tamelier. He looked to me like he wants to drop into two mile. He's maybe not the most hardy horse in a finish. Spillane's Tower, we've, we've tracked this fella all season, aren't we? We've been tracking him for like a big handicap. I think that might have gone out of the window now. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure that the plan was to win this. He kind of, you know, Blood Destiny came back on him really and I don't know if he kind of won this by accident. <laughs> he's impressive though and he's improving. As we said a while back, I think he's a graded horse. 
but we thought he could win a big handicap first. I say handicaps might be out the window now, but he does look a great horse. Uh, he could improve again. He looks for the world like he'd improve again for a step up to three mile. I'm not sure where he goes yet. He could go. He could go Cheltenham. They might keep him in Ireland. There's. Uh, is it the powers two and a half mile at Fairy House? He could run in something like that. And then maybe on to Puntress Town for the three mile grade one novice there. Yeah, I could see him in that Puntress Town race. I like him. I do. Well, uh... Right then, a, uh, a son of Annie Power. Two mile grade two Moscow flyer. Mystical power beat Chigaro seven lengths here. Pardon me. I settled last to four. Shade keen early. Novice over the first two. And again three out. His jumping generally was a little, a little slow, just a shade slow. I love how we found for pressure put between horses on the turn for home and the way he quickened. He showed a real turn of foot here. Personally, I think that turn of foot would be lethal in a Ballymore. I do. He's 4 to 1 favourite for the Supreme now. 4 to 1. I say these prices. And that might be where he goes. It might well be where he goes. And he'd be a big contender there, for sure. I think wherever he goes, I think I'm going to have a little on this guy. He might be my main bet, or... He was, like, my sort of second bet. We'll see. I mean, that was the way Connections were talking after, although that wasn't Willie. That wasn't coming from Willie. If it weren't for the fog, he'd have ran in the Lawless, wouldn't he? The week before. Which just kind of troubles me a little, in a way. But before the race, Willie also mentioned he was a little bit worried about the trip. He seemed to think he'd want further. It might well go supreme. It might do. But it wouldn't be a given. It wouldn't. And for that reason, you couldn't, to me, you couldn't dream of backing this horse at 4-1 to one for the Supreme. I mean, certainly if Ballyburn wins well in Dublin at the DRF, you know, it won't be a certainty to go Supreme, this fella. Um, it won't be. You couldn't be definitive on that. So you couldn't, should, couldn't be taking the fours, I don't think. I were impressed though I liked him the form I'm not sure but interesting point here on a line through Jigaro and Butcher Hollow Jade Jaguji comes a length behind Mystical Power with a £7 mare's allowance uh, take that how you like I'll, I'll certainly take it as a positive if it Positive for Jay DeGruji if this horse is 4 to 1 for a Supreme, though. Um, yeah. Right then, on to Sunday, Punchers Town. Two mile mare's bumper. Maureen beat Arizani 11 lengths. He just did everything right here and was wildly impressive. What the form's like, no idea. But she's related to Faheen. <laughs> the legend that is Faheen. Uh, they didn't commit to Cheltenham Connections, but you'd have to have her on the shortlist for that race. I don't think we're swimming in impressive bumper horses so far. You've got the two of Gordons there. 
and of willies up to now at any way I'd have a top I would up to now got double in the air haven't we so we'll see right then performance of the week I gave it reading Tommy wrong because I think that is class form grade one class form and I'd strongly fancy him, I think, for the Albert Bartlett if they were to go there. Um, I wouldn't dismiss him out of hand in a Ballymore, but I do think he might like that. Just that speed, you know. Um, yeah, I liked him. He, he could be a goal cup horse, this fella. He could be. Number two I gave to Banbridge. I think getting race fitness in a graded race like that away this time of year is a tough ask. I really like Banbridge and if he gets his ground in the Ryanair I think he'd be the one for me too. The third one I gave to Mystical Power. I did. I think he's exciting. I loved how we were put between horses, found and then quickened. Um, I think he'll have learnt a lot from this. If he goes supreme, he will have to sharpen his jumping up. But that's quite possible. I think if he goes Ballymore, he wins. Yeah, I do at this stage anyway. Um There was uh, obviously a couple others there we could have put in Grey Dawn in. I kind of looked at it from the point of view of horses, I guess, that ran in graded races that I might, might be back in for Cheltenham. So I'd say on balance we've probably seen a Cheltenham winner there. At least one. Uh, the racing coming up. It looks some cracking racing for the weekend, but I don't think the weather's playing, is it? The bet for Dublin, yeah. Uh, just had two points on no flies on him. Yeah, for, for the two mile novice hurdle there. 14 to 1. Played it a couple of days ago. Um, There's still 14 to 1 at Sky Bet. He's getting nibbled in a little bit. I think that's a fair price. I think he'll go off single figures. It'll be a deep enough race, it will. But we had a point on him, didn't we, for the Supreme? And I wouldn't have put him up for the Supreme if I didn't think there was a chance he could win this race. So we've got to back him here. Um, yeah, it's a good race, it is. You know, you couldn't be massively confident. But I do think he's got a chance, I do. 14 to 1, I think he's more than fair. And that's about it. We've actually done pretty well there. I've kind of whizzed through that. Maybe back Friday. We'll see. If there's nothing on at all this weekend, I might give it a miss and see you next week. It'll be on Monday next week. Um, or if I think of something interesting to say, maybe I'll come back on Friday anyway. Okay. So thanks for watching. I do appreciate your time. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.